In this video, we're gonna look at a few options for Mac users. And the first one is very straightforward. It's, it's the same as the Windows, which is basically installing code blocks. So code blocks works pretty much the same in Windows and uh, on Mac. So here is the interface. You can just follow uh, the slides, which has step-by-step -step instructions. So I'm not gonna talk about this option anymore. <clears throat> All right, therefore, let's look at some other options that we can use in the Mac. Um, uh, basically, the Mac operating system is, a, is based on Unix environment and Unix is very similar to Linux. So what I showed you on the remote desktop connection with Linux, these commands can run natively on the Mac pretty much. So what I did here is I opened the terminal application. You can get to this in two ways. Either you can go here, go and utilities, and this is it, terminal. So double click on this, or just go to the search and type terminal. And this application basically will, will open up. So here it is, I already have it open. So uh, let's see if the GCC command works. So I'm just gonna type GCC, that's the compiler. And you can see it's already in there. It says no input files. So there's something there expecting the files. If it says command not found, it means you don't have the GCC installed. So you may have to install it. So I have a little hint here. If you found out that you don't have GCC, uh, try running this command, xcode dash select dash dash install. This will download something called the command line tools and they will be installed under this folder. And if you go to this folder in the binary or bin, you will find the GCC has already been installed. I did experience this when I updated my operating system on this Mac. Uh, GCC didn't work anymore until I have done this command. So. So basically, you may find out that GCC is already installed on your Mac. You really don't need to install anything else. Just type GCC, and if you get something like this, no input file, then you know it is recognized. Uh, let's type some crazy command. This is, if you get something like this, command not found, that means you don't have GCC. But if it says no input files, that means it's already in there. So here's what we can do now. We can do exactly what we did on the Linux machine, on the remote Linux machine, use the three, but this is gonna be running locally on my computer. So I can use the Pico editor, a.c, create a hello world file. Let's do that here. Backslash ends means new line and let's finish the program with the return zero and save it. All right, a.c has been created. Let's just uh, look at uh, look at its content. Cat stands for concatenate, but in that case, it can just show me the file. So you can see it, it's here. And as we know from the Linux video, we can compile it like this, gcc minus o a a.c. This is the source. This is the executable that will be created if the compilation was successful. So you can see here it compiled. Executable is marked in green. Dot forward slash means current folder and the executable name and it executed hello world. Everything runs correctly. So basically what you have seen here is um, you, can, you can just type Linux commands because the Mac operating system by default is based on Unix which is compatible with Linux. These two have very similar names because they are, they are kind of similar. At least their underlying features are compatible. They're not 100% the same, but same comments can be run in both places. So, so basically now you can do the file, you can do your, your homework here. And if you navigate to the folder, you can see your, your files from, from the, basically from the computer itself. You can open up the folder where a.c is located and you can upload it straight to web courses when you, when you want to submit your homework. Now, I wanna show you one more option we can do here. Uh, I downloaded this editor called 
uh, VS code. Uh, uh, stands for Visual Studio Code. So what I actually can do is I can type in the editor, but I can go to here to compile it. So I'm kind of, I'm going to use both of these at the same time because this guy is nicer to look at. It's going to color code the cursor, stay where it is, and I can just jump to here super quick to to compile and run the code. So if you see what I have here. I have a file called x.c open in that folder. Users, my username, Zach, temporary. This is where it's located. And from here, if I do pwd, it shows me the current folder I'm at. You can see this is the same folder that is shown here. And you can see here, there's a file called x.c, which I have open in here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to type the uh, file here. Um, actually, I can copy paste it. Let's copy paste this. Right, so I can type my code in here. You can see this is a little bit nicer to work with and then I can save it. And here, let's make this different hello world too. And now this file has been saved x.c. I can just compile it from here. gcc minus o x x.c. And if I execute it, it says it prints hello world too. So again, that's one option you have. You can type everything in the terminal itself by using the editor, or you can type in here in the nice editor and go in here to compile it. So sometimes I like to use this option. You can also use another option is you can tell VS code how where the compiler is located. So you can actually do everything in here. VS Code becomes like IDE. VS Code by itself doesn't have a compiler, so you have to link it. But usually I like to do this because I do like the command line and I can use this nice editor as here. So that's another option you have available to you. So uh, that's pretty much is it for, for this video.